Okay, let's talk about Alm. Alm in German. What up, homie? Anyway, um, Alm is, and I don't know how to explain it. He is our hero, obviously. You know this by now, but I got him up to level 20. He is maxed out. He's been maxed out for a while. Um, I think one before Rudolph. That's when I got him up to 20. Um, obviously his power is really high as you can see here, it's 35, that's because he has the Falcon equipped and I'm kind of in the last battle right now. Um, I'm just doing this to give you my character analysis of each of these characters. But, Alm is a solid A. Yeah, solid A. I think he's one of the better units in the game, definitely one of the top tier units in my opinion, uh, because he becomes versatile. Um, he barely takes damage for me, even despite the fact that his magic defense is a little bit lower than uh, other units. Obviously, it's four, but his defense is solid. I think he takes maybe one or two damage from normal mobs. I mean, it's it's very minimal. He will not die unless you send him into a, uh, an area full of wizards and bosses surrounding. He has uh, two weapons when he ranks up to hero, gets promoted. And his promotion is in the Sage Village uh, with Sea Lucas Party. You talk to the uh, Sage guy, and he, I think the Sage dude was worked for Judah or Rudolph or whatever. I don't remember. But I, I believe he, he, he was evil and he fled. He, you know, ran away. He's hiding in the hidden Sage Village. Uh, sea Lucas talks to him and helps Alm out because due to Sea Lucas' request, Alm immediately promotes. And uh, he becomes a hero. By then, he has um, two attack styles. He has the bow and the sword. Um, obviously, the sword is a lot stronger because you have a weapon for it. But you can also equip, um, you know, a bow to Alm. I would stay away from that. Just stick with Rigel or Falcon, and you do fine. The bow is very useful in some circumstances. Um, if you're attacking a group of witches, definitely use the bow because Alm has a range, attack range of 3 with a bow, while the witches only have 2 I believe, 2 or 1. No, 2. Yeah, 2. And Alm has 3, so they can't counter attack, which is great. And whenever they attack Alm, he will counter attack with a bow. However, if his last um, attack was with a sword, he will be using the sword instead of the bow. So make sure you kind of um, attack accordingly. Against melee units, the sword is definitely better. I would stick with that. But if there's a bunch of witches there, definitely use the bow. It will de definitely destroy them. They would have one health left or uh, whatever. He does 21 damage and that's enough to kill them, so that's that's that. Okay. Uh, next character. Robin. Okay. So my Robin has the magic shield. And the reason why is because the magic shield has an awesome effect. It negates magic damage done to Robin um, to 10%, I believe. So that's like 90% off, meaning she, Robin will never take damage from Skull People unless they like crit or whatever. Um, and he's an armored knight, so his magic defense is low anyway, and they all love to attack Robin. But magic shield kind of negates that, so it's okay. Survivability is extremely high when you do that. Um, his, he does not have any weapons on him because of the magic shield, therefore look, look at his stats, I mean they're very well rounded. Um, power is high, the skill is even higher which is amazing. Um, speed, high for an armor knight, luck, it's pretty up there, it's over 10, it's nice. Defense, standard 18, uh, no magic defense, but any points in magic defense as an armored knight, I'll take it. Moves, 4, that's horrible. Um, Robin is one of those villager people characters that you get in the beginning of the game, and you notice that not, mm, I'd say mediocre, and I've said mediocre before, 
Robin definitely gets like a B, B minus or a B. And the reason why is there's other units that are much better. But as an armor knight, I think Robin can easily rank into the top three for me. Um, honestly, I think Robin is the top two. Balbo is just better. But Robin is the top two armor knight unit for me in the game. Uh, decent health. I, you know, once Robin is a Baron, she's pretty much set. She can withstand most attacks except with magic. So do that and, you know, you'll be fine. You could promote her to a different unit, you know, a different class, archer, mage, whatever. I just think Armor Knight is good, so just promote her to a soldier when you can, and I think uh, you'll be pleased with that decision like I have. Silk. Silky fabric. Alright, let's explain silk. Silk, silk, silk. Out of the healers in the game, the three actual healers that you get, I think silk is the worst, to be honest. Now, some of you might disagree, but honestly, I think silk is the worst healer out of the, the three that you get in this game. Because there's some reasons for that. First of all, uh, the spells. There's one spell in particular that I really like that Silk has. That's the only reason why she's in the uh, uh, the party all the time. It's because she has Warp. That is the utility spell of this game. Warp is awesome. It's one of the most useful spells I've seen. And the reason why I call it the utility spell is because in games like World of Warcraft or Guild Wars or whatever you're, you know, you're into, you use utility spells to maneuver and get an advantage. Um, warp is the advantage in this game. You can send any unit anywhere as long as you know you're right by them. Cast warp, and then you can send them over there to anywhere on the map. I use that all the time, especially in chapter four, because I'm very impatient, and um, I, I usually just send um over there and rape everybody. That's usually what I do. Or you can even send uh, the armor knights somewhere because they have such low movement speeds. Or send send one of your mages to destroy a unit. Uh, it's incredibly useful. I think Silk deserves an A minus um, based on that alone. Um, not to mention her angel does a lot of damage. Uh, I think it does 40 on zombies, mummies, and it does 37 on the dragon zombies for my character. Therefore, um, that's nice. Her defense is, you know, decent as well. Just uh, try to make sure she doesn't get attacked. I mean, she has the prayer ring. Prayer ring, um, if her health is lower than half, she always crits, which means she will always kill that mob. Um, that's great if she uses Angel. If she uses Nosferatu, who knows. Then uh, she also gains 5 health per turn uh, by regeneration. Um, in addition to the five health that she gets, because saints are that's what saints do, and saints also regenerate the adjacent allies next to her. So, right now, if I moved Alm right here, right there, and ended the turn and Alm was damaged, uh, Silk would heal Alm for five points and also heal herself for ten points, which is great. And all of the uh, sages. Saints do that. Anyone who has the recovery skill, spell will heal themselves, but if they are saints, they will heal adjacent units, which is awesome. Right. We're gonna talk about Cliff. Cliff, Cliff, Cliff. Retarded looking Cliff. What a great unit. I mean, I have no complaints except his uh, power, magic power, is a little bit lower than I expect. However, solid. Solid unit. Um, I use Excalibur all the time for Cliff, but Cliff has other things. He's really the improved Bowie. Remember how I use Bowie as a healer and I always told him to give him a chance and blah blah blah? Cliff is much better at that because he can double recover. So um, I use him all the time. I also gave him the Quick Ring so he can move around and uh, deliver any final blows if uh, one of my other important characters that, you know, one of the DPS characters failed to do so, Cliff can easily step in and finish the job um, because he has a lot of spells. The only one he really doesn't have is Ragnarok, um, so that's really good. Not to mention, um, 
Cliff's movement speed is 9 now, which is awesome, because now Cliff can kind of just stand by, you know, stand by one of the uh, units and just heal them, you know, another mage perhaps, he can heal himself, um, he can take a lot of damage as well, uh, he has 18 defense for a mage, which is extremely high, uh, I'm very satisfied with Cliff. He's the best villager unit you get in this game, and he can fit the mold of any class because he has the accoutral malts uh, based on his stats and his stat growth. Um, you can make him a soldier, cavalier, archer, mage, whatever, but he has the most benefit from mage class. That's my recommendation there. Uh, Cliff will get a solid A-, minus. very good unit. Um, like I said, I would take him in end game, and I did, and he did perform his job. There's just other characters that kind of did the work, but you know, he was part of it. Claire. Clarabelle. Okay. Falcon Knight. Got her to level 14. Not bad. Um, I think... Claire is the worst Falcon Knight character in the game. Well, there's only four, and she's the only one that's, um, you know, kind of not the Pegasus Knight sisters. Therefore, it kind of makes her bad anyway. But the reason why is because um, her magic defense is low. And um, other than that, though, really, quite honestly, Claire is not a bad unit. She is very useful. She barely takes damage unless it's like by magic. She doesn't take arrow damage um, that much either. It's just she's very useful and she can demolish anybody that attacks her. But that's because you know I got her up um, through the ranks. I did get get her to Falcon Knight. I did level her uh, quite a bit. She definitely did her job. It's just the Pegasus sisters are better. That's why Claire gets an A- minus along with Cliff. Um, they're pretty much the same to me in terms of usefulness. They perform, but they're just better units out there. Um, other than that, her stats are pretty well rounded. Her defense isn't that high to be honest with you, but her magic defense is 8 and that's acceptable. Could be a little bit higher, but it's not bad. There's just the other Pegasus type units are so much better. And Claire, so that's kind of where she lies. Python. Python, uh, he is uh, the only one of the Liberation Force units that I'm actually taking to endgame and I'm, I'm, I use uh, quite a bit of. Uh, Python is not bad. I made him a Bonite, got him to the last tier, level 10, so he definitely got his share fair of battles. Um, he can do 18 damage on a normal mob, I believe. Or no, no, no. 18 damage on a zombie times 2, so 36. That kills him. That's good. That's done. Um, he is useful, however, his defense is low. He does get hit up quite a bit. Magic defense is low, so you need to watch out for him. Make sure you use Psychic on him every now and then, or Fortify or whatever. But. You know, other than that, he can attack five spaces away, so you don't expect him to get hit. Um, but sometimes, you know, you just can't help it. The AIs like to attack, you know, certain characters. So definitely, Python does get hit a little bit, and he does take more damage than some of the other units. Definitely true. That's why Python deserves a grade of a B minus or a B, uh, somewhere in between, really. Um, but as an archer, I think he is the best unit as an archer. There's just better ways, you know, I don't need an archer. I have mages that can do a lot more damage. Um, and I have the magic ring that pretty much makes that mage attack five spaces away. Um, meaning it's actually better than Python itself. And that's, that's primarily the reason why he is brought to endgame and he serves his purpose. Um, but not against the uh, the major major units that you're up against. But he's not a bad unit. Like I said before, I gave him like an A minus because he was amazing. That's because we didn't have any other units. 
but for end game purposes, this final battle. Um, he's there, but, you know, there's better units. Okay, let's talk about Matilda. Matilda is a cavalry unit that you get in the chapter 3. Um, she's actually really good. Uh, don't get me wrong. Cleave was um, originally the cavalry unit, one of the Liberation Forces guys, and I dropped him immediately after I got Matilda. Um, seriously, Cleave, gone. As soon as I got Matilda, I was like, yeah, she's so much better. Um, she has, I think she has a, a Night Lance or the Steel Lance, I'm not really sure. I think it's the Night Lance. So her power should be 22, but it's just based on her overall stats. They're amazing. Skill, speed, luck, defense, they're well rounded. Magic defense is way higher than Leaves. And uh, she has a better survivability and DPS output. So uh, it's really DPT, damage per turn, but you know, we'll just say DPS because I'm just so used to it. Um, I got her up to Gold Knight, it wasn't hard. She is level 10 so she pretty much you know did the same amount of work as Python uh, I think she's a little bit better I would give her a B plus to be honest with you she's a great unit definitely test her out keep her in the game uh, better than Cleave on all levels so that's that I don't really know how to pronounce her name. Diute, Dute, Booty, Duty. Um, she is my favorite character in the game. A plus, solid A plus, awesome unit. Definitely my favorite. And there's some reasons for that. One, um, portrait's cool. I like her name. Um, a lot of health for a mage. I gave her the angel ring, and uh, I got her up to. I think 14 or 13 with, uh, with the angel ring from uh, which she joined. Don't remember what level she joined at, uh, but you get her at, after the uh, floodgate on chapter three. So you really only use her in chapter four unless you're grinding. Uh, definitely grind her up a couple of levels at least, uh, so you get a lot of moves um, with you. She levels up to a priest, so she heals herself uh, five points per turn, which is awesome. Meaning Ragnarok only costs five points. Um, and then as soon as you get the magic ring, give it to Dute. Give it to her. She's awesome with it. Because most of her spells, actually all of her spells, have a range of one. Aura, Angel, Ragnarok, Fire, they all have one. She does not have Lightning. Um, therefore, you kind of need to give her the magic ring and... That way she can attack five spaces away. She is Python that can um, cast Angel five spaces away. I mean, that is amazing. Not to mention her stats are unbelievable. Her natural luck is 23, her magic power is 28, which is her raw power, which is amazing. Uh, her skill, speed, all up there. Her defense is horrible, but it doesn't matter because she, she shouldn't get hit. And even if she does, um, she can she can defend herself because her power is up there. She can destroy a unit with one or two hits. I mean, it's awesome. Her magic defense is 15. It's reasonable. Uh, she only has four moves, so I gave her a uh, quick ring as well sometimes. Before I got the uh, angel or magic ring, I gave her the quick ring to uh, test that out, and she did a great job. But magic ring with her is... B bomb, A plus. No other unit, in my opinion, is better than her. If you if you play the game like I do, yeah. And her Ragnarok is awesome. Just use Psychic on her after you use Ragnarok. And that's a wrap. That is a wrap city. Tita. Tita has the Dragon Shield. I have a Dragon Shield. I gave Tita, 
you got from a zombie. And she is, in my opinion, she is the best healer unit in the game because she has one move, Fortify. Um, I didn't get her high enough because I didn't need to. I just used Fortify all the time. And she should learn Illusion soon. I don't know what she summons. I don't really care. Um, I, that's not the point of Tita, in my opinion. Her point is to use Fortify all the way. Fortify is that spell where you could heal every unit for 15 points. Use it every turn, and then heal her with one of your other healers. That's just how I would do it. And, you know, her stats are okay. I mean, if I got her 20, I'm sure they'll be fine. Maybe give her the Angel Ring. I don't know. It's just... She has Fortify, she has Psychic, I mean what, what more is to ask for? She's gonna get Illusion, I don't even know if she gets Warp, but if she does that would be amazing. Um, that's it, I mean she is, she has the most usefulness. Her, her power itself is not very good, but as a healer unit, she is the most useful. And she, you get her at chapter 4, pretty like halfway through chapter 4 on Alm's side. So you don't really get to use her a whole lot, but once you get her, you're you're unstoppable unless you suck at the game. I mean that's that's about it. Um, with her, I'm gonna give her a B because you get her so late. Then other than that, she would be a solid, you know, an, an A minus because I just I have a lot of questions. Don't know how good she is in battle because I don't use her in battle. Um, I only use her to heal, so as a healer she would definitely get an A, you know, an A plus almost. It's just, it's not like, I only want to give like one one or two characters A pluses, so as a healer she is the best, just keep that in mind. Let's talk about Celica. Princess! Okay, Princess Celica. She levels up in Chapter 3 after you rescue Est uh, from Gaze's area. Uh, make sure she's level 20 after that battle's over. But don't worry, you can grind all through that battle. Killing Bone Walkers, that's when I got her to 20. And uh, she's not bad. Her skill's high, it's really high. Her luck is 40. Don't really know why. Oh, she has the Angel Ring on her. That's why. Uh, her defense is it's okay. Um, her power is low. Fortunately, her stats kind of bad. However, that's not the point of her either. She's a caster character. She has Ragnarok, one of the only two units that have it, and uh, she also has Lightning and Excalibur. So she's an all-around good unit. Uh, I gave her the Holy Sword. So against uh, shitty mobs, um, you know the grinding portions and the mummies and all that stuff, the dark mobs, she will be able to handle herself without, you know, not being able to kill the enemy or doing like five damage and ending. Um, Ragnarok is awesome. You get that at level 20 um, before you rank up. So you get to test that out on some of the uh, dragon zombies when you're grinding. And, you know, that's good. Just be careful because it costs 10 points. That's why she has the uh, angel ring, and that's also why you know she can heal herself and uh, have others heal her. And just be careful with Ragnarok, but with characters like Duty, you don't need to be careful because she's set. <laughs> she's just fucking set. Celica would get a a minus. I think Alm's a little bit better to be honest with you, but they both have their pros and cons. They're they're the uh, main characters of the game, so they're supposed to be good. Um, but I think Alm is a little bit more useful now. In his party, he's definitely one of the main characters, the main units that I use. Celica, not so much, because there's just other units that are better. Jenny. Jenny has the Holy Ring. Which uh, helps her deal with mobs, the dark mobs, and it heals her 5 points, so it heals her 10 points a turn. She has some great spells, Psychic, she is the second healer you get in the game, Chapter 2, Celica's group, 
and she has Psychic. She learns that quite early as well, so uh, don't be afraid to use it. I use it constantly. Don't even use Recovery, I just use Psychic. Um, unless I'm standing right next to them or whatever. Psychic allows you to heal one unit anywhere on the map for a cost of 3 HP points, so it's virtually free. Once she's, uh, yeah, it's virtually free, so don't even worry about it. As a saint, she can heal adjacent units as well to make sure she sticks with Celico uh, when she uses Ragnarok, and that would be good for you. Magic power is definitely higher than Sylph, which is why I said Jenny has a lot more potential. Her stats are better. Her speed is lower, though. Her defense is a little bit low, but it's okay. Um, that's not the point of her either. Uh, she's a healer that is able to defend herself uh, quite well. Yeah, with Angel. Her illusions are not as strong as a uh, douchebag silk, but it doesn't matter. I don't really use illusions a whole lot anymore. Um, <clears throat> I would stick with, because they just get in the way. I just stick with the standard units that you have. It's, it shows that you have a little bit more tactics. Uh, Jenny, I would give her an uh, I'd give her an A minus. Yep, A minus. Silk B plus, so A minus. May have been wrong there. May. Okay, let's talk about May. May, Mayflower. May's a really good unit. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Others may consider her mediocre. She's awesome. Um, with my May, her power grew like hell. Um, I gave her the Holy Sword. So her power is 31. If she gets attacked head on, she can attack with the uh, sword. Um, most of these mobs are weak to Holy anyway. So that would help her out. Her health is 46. So her, she gets a lot of health once she promotes a priest. That's no problem. And I did maximize her. She's level 20. She only knows a few spells. She knows Aura, Angel, Lightning, Fire, and Recover. Aura is her thing, but she also knows Angel. So she's like a little bit... She's like Dute, Duty, just not good. Uh, not as good. Let's say, but May is still very valuable. Um, she is the, the caster of the group in Celia's party um, that doesn't have Ragnarok. If it's not Celica, then it's going to be May. That's just how it works. She has a lot of power. The rest of her stats suck, except magic defense. Um, just keep that in mind, and um, you know, just try and try to make sure she doesn't get attacked. But she can do massive amounts of damage. So. That's good. Um, overall, May would definitely get a B. Yep, B, B. Because there's better units. Saber. Saber's good. I like Saber. I gave him Dark Sword. Increases his power by a lot. Um, his skill, speed, defense really high. Once he's a slayer, his magic defense boosts up. Um, really good unit. However, for me, there are better units. And there, there's a reason why I keep saying this, is because I use the Pegasus Knights all the time. They're the best units in, in Civica's party, in my opinion. Um, however, when you exclude them, Saber is definitely top on the list, along with May. So he also gets a B+. Yep, got him to level 12. He's done a lot of work in Silica's party after promotions. He can move seven spaces, so that's pretty high. Um, and he's definitely done his job. Okay, Cammy. Alright, Cammy. Gave him the silver sword that you find in the sage forest. Um, you get Cami along with Valbo and uh, Leo in the, in the uh, Dahaz area in chapter 2 on the sea. 
He is okay. I think Saber is definitely a little bit more superior, but he's not a bad unit either. Um, his magic defense isn't as high as Saber's, uh, but he has some other unique things like speed is good. His power is not bad. It's just a Dark Sword definitely helps the cause, and uh, naturally Saber's power is a little bit higher. But Kamui has a little bit more survivability than Saber, which is why. Um, some people may prefer Kamui over Saber, I wouldn't, but he's not a bad unit either, so he gets a solid B. Balbo, he has the Silver Lance that you also find in the Lost Woods. Um, Balbo is the best Armor Knight unit in the game. Uh, you don't get a whole lot of Armor Knights, but Balbo is the best one. He's a Baron. He was the first armor nine of mine to get the Baron, and look at his stats. I mean, his defense is 19. It's awesome. He has no magic defense, but that could be fixed. Um, I had the Dragon Shield um, while I was grinding. I got the Dragon Shield, and I didn't save. I screwed up, and uh, I didn't use the uh, Shift save for the emulator that I'm using the Nestopia. And that really pissed me off because I got the Dragon Shield, and that's a rare drop. That's like one out of 255 Dragon Zombies or whatever. I don't remember the exact stats uh, on it, but it is one of the best shields in the game. It gives you plus 13 defense, which would have brought his defense up to um, 32, which would have been amazing. And his magic defense goes up to 13, which is more than enough to survive. So if you do get a Dragon Shield, Give it to Balbo. That's the best advice I can give you on Balbo. And he's a really good unit. I, I would give him a solid A minus. Definitely. Leo, my man. Not a very good unit. He's one of the mediocre units. Um, Python is so much better. But Leo's not bad. It's just Python's better. That's that's it. No magic defense. Um, he has a little bit more defense than Python. It's just he doesn't do a lot, uh, as much damage. I think he has the holy bow. Let's find out. Shit. Got that. He has a silver bow, meaning Python has a holy bow. Yep. He. He's. Uh. I. Th I would give him a C. He's okay. He misses quite a bit. It's just. Python's better, and there are other better units, but he can attack five spaces away, so, you know, you can use him in certain situations, just Pegasus Sisters are great. Okay, now we're going to talk about the Pegasus Sisters. Talk about Paula first. Paula has a Hand Axe, Hand Lance, not Axe, Hand Lance, the Javelin, allows you to attack one space away and increases power by three, so her power would be 19. Not very high. I gave her the Angel Ring at level 11, of uh, being a Falcon Knight, and grinded at uh, Dolk's Fort. If you haven't seen those videos, check those out because they're pretty awesome. Um, her defense is high, and her power is, you know, as much as her defense. That's great. Um, out of the three sisters, she is the worst, so she gets an A minus. Um, however, she will destroy any of those sperm monsters up there um, in one hit. She has a lot of damage, very useful. Once you level those sisters to 20, you will not have a lot of trouble. You'll have very little difficulty, very little troubles. And the uh, game is still a little challenging, but it's, it's not as hard as it could be. So keep that in mind. Uh, or you can just not use them. But they are great units. Uh, Paula is the weakest of the three, in my opinion, and that's that. A minus. Katria. Katria comes with the Angel Ring, and I had it equipped on her until I got S'd, um, which is cool. Um, she's really good. Um, she does not have an item and her natural power is 35. What the fuck? I mean, that is extremely high. Her skill's good, her speed's good, and her luck is okay. Defense is, you know, just as much as Paula. Magic defense is higher than Paula. 
Uh, she's the better, she's better than Paula, to be honest with you. So much better. Um, she gets an A. Solid A. I would love to get her, give her an A+, plus, but there's one more unit that's better than her. And she will do like 60 damage on the mob. On those sperm monsters, she does like 60 damage. I mean, she's freaking beast. Definitely grind her up. And that last unit that I was talking about that said was better than Katria is Est. Est is like that dark horse. Immediately give her the angel ring and immediately keep it on her until she's level 20. Because uh, she's awesome. She is freaking cool, man. I gave her the angel ring from start to finish and look at her stats. 34 power. Uh, her skill, speed, luck. That is her natural luck. Her luck is 36. Defense is, that's her natural defense as well. Her stats are so much better than Katria's, but her power is just a little bit lower, but it doesn't matter because her stats are so much better. A plus unit. Est and Duty is your two units that are the best units in the game. Definitely use them. A plus. Alright, Mycin. You get Mycin. Um, he is the 10th character under the roster for uh, Alms Party going into the last battle. You get Mycin uh, right right into chapter 5. Uh, he's actually not a bad character. He's already a gold knight. Uh, not bad. Give him the Gladius and his power goes to 37, which is awesome. Because he needs it. His other stats are horrible. Except for his defense, which is standard. Uh, anything under 20 is standard. Anything between 15 and 20 is standard to me. And 18 seems to be the average. So he's average. But he's not a bad unit. Just give him the Gladius and you'll do fine. Unless you have some other characters that are not as strong. That are not in the uh, tier 3. Give it to them. But for me, Gladius suits Mycin well. He did a great job battling. Um... His Kraid, well, he only gets to use him in the last chapter, I mean, that sucks, but I think he deserves a B. B or B minus, one of those two, definitely. Let's take a look at some of the units that did not get to join the last battle. Got quite a bit. Start with Gray, he's one of the village people. Fortunately, he's the only one out of the villagers that could not join that final battle because he's not as good as the others. Uh, Gray is not a mediocre unit. At the end of the day, he really is, but he does have his uses uh, throughout the game. Give him the bolt um, after you get Rigel in Chapter 3, and uh, he would be a little bit better uh, because it's that's pretty much a magic attack, I, I believe, because it's thunder-based. However, it becomes obsolete. He only does like 18 damage a turn. Um, his magic defense is high, which is great. It's just there's other characters that are much better. But the bolt does allow him to attack another space away, so he's, it's almost like a mage type. So, you know, that's fine. It's just there's better characters. Uh, Gray gets a C. Plus. Zeke. Zeke you get um, when you're fighting Jerome, if Tita is alive, which you, you know, you better keep her alive, she's fucking good, and Zeke joins, he betrays the Rudolph group, well he was forced anyway, so he, you know, he thanks you by killing Jerome with you, and he joins you. Um, Zeke is not a bad unit, it's just Matilda's better. Uh, he's better than Cleave, let me tell you that. Um, but I think he's one step lower than Mycin, so... Sorry bro, you get a C+. You're better than Grey, I think you're better than Grey, but Zeke, still C+. In my opinion, I think maybe he deserves a B-, but I'm just gonna give him a C+, because... Uh, he pissed me off a couple of times by missing and not doing enough damage, you know something like that and his magic defense is not that impressive next Luca Luca is that one character that you get in the very beginning of the game he's the uh, the soldier 
Unfortunately, Luca, man, you got outperformed. I really thought Luca was going to end game with me because it sounded, you know, noble of me to do. But Robin outperformed him. Robin's stats are so much better. Luca, I'm sorry, but you get a C. Plus. I can't, you know what, man? I can't believe Gray got a C. Plus. But I'm dead set on giving him a C. Plus. Luca, yeah, C. Plus. Sorry, bro. Just, there's other characters. You didn't do well as Robin. You didn't do well as Valvo. Don't deserve to be in the B, B tier. Sorry. Force. Oh, man, this guy blows dick. Um, he is forced to suck. He sucks. Um, and he's not like the lowest of the low. It's just... Man, he's horrible. He, look at look at the difference between Ruka and uh, they're two levels apart. Look at the difference. You got someone with 12 skill, double skill, speed is a little higher, one less luck, magic defense, force is a little bit higher, but I mean, it's like horrible. So force, you get a C minus. Sorry, bro, but you know, force yourself to do better. How's that? Cleave. Brother, you are not a good unit. Matilda's better. Um, his stats are not bad. It's just Matilda's better. Magic defense is horrible, so keep him away from those, you know, wizards and witches, which there's a lot of. That's why he's not as useful. Uh, Cleave gets a C minus as well. Sorry, but you pissed me off a number of times. So that's that's how that goes. Ruto. Ruto has the holy shield. Once you level up Ruto, he becomes better, but he's still a mediocre unit in my opinion. He has a lot of decent moves, he starts off with Excalibur, which is awesome. Um, but other than that, until he gets to a Sage, he does, he's like a Sonya. Except I've actually used Ruto and I've never really touched Sonya. That's pretty much it. Um, on that, oh man, horrible. Just. Not good. Always gets attacked by units. Even if I position him away, he, he takes one attack and he's like half gone. Like barely surviving. So just keep that in mind. Use him as a spare healer on the bigger maps that allows you to use all your units. And that's pretty much the extent that I use Ruto. So in conclusion, Ruto is a C+. Let's take a look at Celica's party. People I didn't use. Bowie Bowie. Remember when I said give Bowie a chance? Do not put him in endgame. I told you that I'm not taking him to endgame, and I actually meant that. He does not deserve a spot there, because he's not as good as some of the other units. Um, but Bowie did serve his purpose throughout the game. He's like a gray. He served his purpose, but honestly, I would give Bowie a B-, minus, the lowest B- minus that you can give. Because... He does do a lot more damage than May initially, um, and he has a bigger survivability. So Bowie's a little bit better, but he misses a lot, and he, you know, he's kind of slow. And I understand when people say he's a mediocre unit, and I've experienced that. That's why he's a spare healer to me, and he's like a mix between Gray and Ruto. But he gets a B minus, the lowest B minus possible. And his stats, they're not impressive. Magic defense is 7. Skill speed, really low. His power and defense, pretty low as well. However, he's only level 2. <laughs> There's a big difference between level 20 and level 2, you know? Jesse. I gave Jesse the hero sword. He's a Myrmidon. Um, so he's tier 2. He could be a slayer, but I didn't level him at all. Um, <clears throat> I didn't give him a chance. It's one of the few characters I did not give him a chance. And it's nothing personal, it's just I didn't have space for him. You know, I didn't want to soak up XP from Saber or Kami because those were two units that I actually enjoyed using that I thought they served a purpose and I was going to squeeze both of them into the end game, which I did. So I have no regrets there. However, I think Jesse has a little bit of potential. His defense is rather low, but his skill and speed 
It's not bad. It's not a bad unit. It's just, I, he comes late in the game. He's outclassed by Kami and um, Saber. That's the reason why. And he's, I think he's better than Gray. I think he has more potential than Gray. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give Jesse a B minus. But honestly, I didn't use him. So I, I really don't have anything to go off on except what I see here in front of me. Because by the time he joined, um, you know, Kami and Saber were Slayers, so there's a big difference. Um, Sonya, I didn't really use her a whole lot either. I use her occasionally just to test her out. I just think uh, there's other characters that are much better and that's it. Um, she does come with some interesting spells like Excalibur, but other than that, I mean, I already have other units that are better that are higher level, that are already sages. By the time I got Sonya, um, <clears throat> Mei was uh, level 20. She was already ranked up to Priest, while Sonya is level 7. I mean, you really think I'm going to use that? Booby was doing better than Sonya at that point, because he was already a sage. Um, and it's, it's pretty much like that. I'm sorry, but you kind of joined too late, and my units were so much stronger than you that I couldn't... I didn't have the will to uh, try and even use you. That's the point. Um, however, let's take a look at her stats real quick. Defense is low. Luck is low. I think she deserves a C+. I could be wrong. She could have potential, but I'm just not sure. Oh, Atlas. Fuck you, Atlas. Sackless Atlas, man. This guy sucks. Um, I read in forums while I was doing a little bit of research uh, because I wanted to get some background information on some of the characters um, just to see, you know, what other people had to think, had to say, and what they thought uh, about certain characters. And I read that Atlas is actually good. This guy said Atlas was good, and I was like, no way, no way, because on my first playthrough, before I started recording this, uh, like two years ago, when I played this game, I actually got Atlas. And I used him just a little bit. He died. And I was like, fuck this guy. And I decided to give him a chance, and I was still like, fuck this dude, man. I made him a soldier, and I was hoping to make him an armored knight, because his defense was... I mean, I, he had power. He had power, but he had nothing else. He had nothing else. And I'm just like... Fuck, go fuck yourself. <laughs> you know, it's just like, go fuck yourself. Um, the plan was, his power was high, make him a soldier, make him an armored knight, and then eventually his defense would grow. Maybe he might get lucky and make it a baron. Uh, make it to a baron? No way. He's way too uh, underleveled. Comes in as a villager, meaning you have to start from level 10 from the villager. Go to the zombie shrine. See if he lives. Level him up to soldier. Grind him to what? Ten from a soldier to armor knight. Grind him to ten. Get him up to baron. And then he's actually useful. That's way too much work. I'm not gonna do that. You, you guys may. I'm not going to. There's no fucking way in hell. That's like getting. That's like getting Jesse in chapter four. Well, you get him in chapter three. Well, let's just say you get him in chapter four, and he's fucking level one mercenary. It's just like, go oh, fuck yourself. No way. It's almost like that. Uh, Atlas gets a D, solid D, blows ass. He's a statless Atlas. He's a sackless douche. Woodcutter profession suits him, but very well. And I hope him and his siblings get lost and they die of some horrible disease. Um, that's how I feel about Atlas.